Hi everybody. Um, uh, today we're going to have the uh, the fourth in our series of uh, jazz lectures um, that the uh, Jazz Society of Santa Cruz County is putting on, uh, and um, the the intention of these lessons is to be sort of uh, to be any level of musician at all and get something from it from beginning beginners, so we want it to be really inclusive as opposed to a master class. Um, anyway, uh, today, oh and let me say before we start that um, uh, the band, the lectures, everybody is doing this for free for the audience, and um, the way we pay them is by donations. So if you guys enjoy today, please uh, uh, put some money in the tip jar, which is not out there, but it will soon be out there. Uh, and we can really use your support. The last three times, uh, the band and the lecture has been paid out of the tip jar alone, which is awesome. So anyway, jazz needs our support. So um, our lecturer today is Jason Belanque, and uh, he's a very in-demand, two Bay Area uh, saxophonist. Uh, he uh, has a master's in jazz from Cal State Hayward. Uh, he teaches at Los Gatos High School and has been teaching privately for 20 years. Uh, and he has a very, very wide uh, range of styles, everything from jazz to pop, even to avant-garde stuff. Uh, and he's, well, you'll hear, he's amazing. So please uh, put your hands together for Jason Bowie. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm Jason. Um, I've been playing saxophone for a, for a very long time. I started when I was just a kid, and I went through the high school program, and I got really into jazz when I was a teenager. And of course, I started out much like most teenagers do, listening to recordings and trying to figure out how to play like that. And I started out, I guess, just by simply improvising. I, you know, I think. I guess the first thing I want to talk about before I get into any real in-depth theory or anything, you know, complicated, because obviously I didn't start out improvising like that. You know, I started out pretty much, I would suppose, like everybody else, which is just to learn some fundamentals on your instrument, but then eventually just play it. So I remember, you know, being a kid and taking, you know, as soon as I learned how to play like a, you know, C or G major scale, I would just start improvising over it. And so we would just play a band on a guitar or a piano, and I would just go nuts and make the major scale. You know, so that's that's kind of how it started. So I would say for anybody who has you know an interest in that, just take whatever knowledge you have to start out and see how you can stretch it. And do that first, and then as you start to get comfortable with that concept, then you can start to apply things slowly so that they become easy and then gradually harder. And that's, that's sort of what I'll do today. But I guess the first thing I'll do is just sort of on something just to what can you do in the key of concert B flat? You know, how about that? Why don't we just maybe Rick and I'll do a little little swing thing? One, two, oh, one, two. <laughs> Just me, 
going around on one scale. You know, just taking a constant B flat scale and just seeing what you can do with it, just to stretch it out. And of course, there's other, you know, phrasing and things to deal with and tumble and all those technical things that we learn as students, but essentially that's just being, you know, how I started off. So that'd be sort of my I guess for anybody who's here who's learning how to improvise, trying to get into the music for the first time and, and trying to, you know, get away from reading off the page or doing anything that we do when we're learning on the instrument, that's the first thing I would suggest. So, you know, this, this, uh, this lecture is essentially about improvising and when Rick asked me, you know, what I wanted to do, I said, well, you know, I, I think you can, you can really sum everything up with a blues, because blues has it all, right? You know, and harmonically, I mean, you can start out with just three chords, and then you can build upon that. You can start to add substitutions, and as you go through the history of the music, the, the chord changes get more complex. So you're starting out with three chords, rural blues, as they call it, and then you're getting into the, you know, into the, the swing and the bebop era, where you're getting into stacking more chords on top of each other. And then, of course, people like Charlie Parker coming along and adding even more chords on top of that. So it gets more and more complex as you go throughout you know, the history of the music. So um, I guess the, the first thing is probably just start off simple with just a three-chord blues. I'm just going to use the whiteboard here. So it's really essentially just, just three chords, right? You have, and I'll just, I'll just put this in my key because it's sort of irrelevant what, what key you're in, right? So I'll just do it in D since I'm doing an alto sax concert F. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna start with just a 12 bar rural blues. Four bars of the one chord, D dominant seventh, and we'll go through that. Like so. So, you know, a, a basic rural blues, again, will have, have three chords. So you have the one chord for four bars. And then when you go to the fifth bar, you have two bars of the, of the four, okay? Moving to the four chord. For anybody who understands that or doesn't understand it, it's very easy. You just go up four steps. So if you're in D, right, you go up four, D, E, F, G, and move up to G. And you go back down to the one and then the five, which is D, E, F, G, A, okay? Down to the four, G7, D, E, F, G. Back to the, the one, which is my dominant there. And then back to the five. So, you know, the, the first thing you have to do when you're learning how to deal with harmony is you have to learn to, to chord spell. Now, the, the best way, I think, is to relate everything to the major scale. You know, the first thing you honestly have to do before you can really start to dig into any kind of harmony is learn all your major scales, right? <laughs> Once you get that, then you can chord spell everything as far as the major chords. So we have a D, I use dominant seventh chords when I'm starting out, not in this. You can also do triads, but for the sake of the lecture today, we'll use uh, dominant seventh chords. So it's very simple. You take your major seventh. So one, three, five, and seven of your scale, okay? So for D major, you'll have D, F sharp, A, and C sharp. So when you have a dominant seventh chord, what you want to do is take your, your seventh note and then you want to lower it down a half step. Okay, now for, for any of those of you who don't know what a half step is, it means to flatten the note. Okay, lowering a half step, but maybe another topic of conversation. So then you would, you would have D dominant seventh, so you'd have D, F sharp, A, and so I'll try to talk to the mic here. No, I was going to ask him to bring the mic up a little bit so you so can, I can have a little more yeah. freedom off of it. Thank you, thank you. 
pretty hot right is now. Is it pretty already. hot? Okay. So you'll have D, F sharp, A, and C for your for your notes here. Okay. So moving on to the four chord, then you'll have G, B, D, and then F sharp is your your seventh. So you would lower that down. You get F natural. Okay. So those are your notes there. And then from there you'll go to the back to the one chord. So same thing, D F sharp A C, and then you have A dominant seventh. So A C sharp E G. Okay, back to the four G B D F, and we discuss these. So now you 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 have just four notes per chord. And the idea of when you start off this is really just try to stick to the chord tones. You know, even if you know more than this, no matter what, just just stick to the notes at hand. So when you're taking your, your solo, you're just simply playing those notes, you know? And, and you can start out just by having, you know, whole notes and half notes. I've been teaching kids for a long time, so the first thing they do is they, they try to play all this stuff, moving their fingers, because if you work on a lot of techniques, I'll say, no, you know, start off by just making sure you're getting the right notes, and then just, you can sort of start to build it as you become more comfortable. You want to make sure you're marking the time by by keeping the form, you want to make sure you're hitting the right notes, for example, when you go to the four chord and when you go to the five chord, etc., etc. So I'll, I'll do a little solo here, just kind of a couple choruses here of just the, the one, four, five blues in, the, in concert F in our, my D. One, two, a one, two, three. <laughs> Starting on the root, 
the very core, so you can sort of hear what I mean and really try to make it obvious. And then I'll move on and I'll do a little more voice that you can make. So why don't we start out, uh, same thing right here. One, two, a one, two, three. <laughs> So, you know, as, as things start to progress and we start getting into going from the music becoming, from going from dance music to music played in nightclubs where people are really trying to strut their stuff, you know, we start to add more chords on top of other chords, you know. So, uh, in, we, there, I'm going to introduce something we call this a, a bop blues. So, now essentially what we're doing is we're... Uh, we're putting some more chords stacking on other chords, okay? So, I'm gonna write it here. It's it's the same key. Obviously, we have some some similarities, okay? We're still going to the, the four chord, except we're gonna change things here, okay? And instead of, well, Now we're getting things a little bit more complex, okay? So now I, I want to just talk a little bit about probably the most important thing you can possibly know about the progressions of jazz, and that is the 2-5-1 progression. I'm sure some of you are familiar with that, you know, depending on how far along you are with it, but it's, it is the single most important and common chord progression that you will you will see, okay? So for those of you who don't really know what two five one is, okay, uh, we have several in the in the bop blues. We have one that's connecting from the fourth bar into the fifth, that turn around here, where you see the minor going to the, the dominant. Uh, and maybe I'll back up for a minute too, just so for those of you who don't know, okay, these the, what these symbols are, because I know we're sort of have some mixed levels in the audience. The seven next to the note, that's that's the dominant, as we were talking about earlier, the, the little slash here, that's the minor symbol, okay? So now, we were talking about earlier about taking the major scale and comparing it to the minor. So in the dominant chord, you're gonna lower the seventh note a half step. In the minor, you're gonna lower both the third and the seventh down a half step. So just to compare, so if you have a, a D major chord, you'll have if you have a D dominant seventh chord, you'll have. And if you have D minor, you'll have. Okay, so those are those are the three types of chords that we have here in the Bob Blues. Okay, there's also other things you can add to diminish. But I don't think I'm going to discuss much of that today. Diminished harmony. So um, what we have here is we start out starting on the one chord, and then instead of saying on the on the one chord for the second bar, we move over to the four. Okay, so we're we're getting a little fancier now. Okay, 
and then back to the one again. Now, finally, the, the two, five, one. So this is your one, right? This is your, this is your home base, your target one chord here, okay? G, G7. So what happens in the fourth bar is we're moving to the two chord, okay? Which is your A. Second note of G is A, right? So that's your two. Then you have your five. Fifth note of G or is D, so G, A, B, C, D. So that's your five chord. So two, five, one, okay? So that's what we have there, okay? Staying on G7, G6, just like rule below is four chord and one. And then here we have another two, five, one, okay? F sharp minor to B7, which is F sharp is the two of E, right? B7 is the five of E, okay? So that's your two, five, one, E minor. Then we have E minor, back to the e, A7, and then finally two, five, one to E minor. Right? And two, five, one, back to D7. Okay? So this is an example of a bop blues where you're starting to get a little fancier and, and start to, to add some more progressions. Okay? So um, I'm going to do the same idea that I did on the, uh, the one, four, five blues where I'm really just essentially doing the, the triads on every chord. I'm not going to get into too much mix until a little bit later. So I, I'm just going to basically be doing just the one, three, five, seven on every chord. One, two, or one, two, three. <laughs> because you probably wouldn't want that, that major seventh up there at the top. That okay. might sound a little, a little funny. I, I, think, I think dominant is definitely the way to go. And you know, the, the other thing that I want to get into to talk about a dominant chord uh, a little bit more in, in, the, uh, in this course, but a, a dominant chord is essentially there to create tension. Um, and that's, that's essentially what the, why this kind of stuff is so great, because you can, you can take these simple seventh chords and you can start to stack other stuff on top of it okay and you know like when you're getting into thicker context you're going to do that kind of stuff especially on a, mm -hmm. on a dominant chord right you're going to have uh, you know altered chords like flat 13 sharp 11 blah, 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 all that stuff and you're going to do that on a dominant chord and you can do it on many all, all different chords of stuff of course but that tension on a dominant chord is you know that's that's where that stuff sounds really cool is when you put it on, on that so probably i wouldn't you know use that there as that function so uh, anybody? Um, yeah. Is that like a, a good exercise to do? Just stay on the chordal tones and play a blues. I've never done that. Yeah, it, it it really is a great exercise. I actually recommend to, to anybody that you know studies uh, their instrument that I I can't stress the importance of keeping it simple, knowing what you're doing, and really being very accurate with you with what you're trying to produce and really knowing it so to start out by just saying i'm going to take a, a, a solo over just triads i'm going to take a solo where i'm just going to go from seven to three uh, i'm going to take a solo using whole notes and half notes and quarter notes and not swing or i'm just going to you know really isolating everything and keeping it simple because improvising is an interesting thing you can essentially do whatever you want right you can make it super complex completely free or you can make it really structured.
But I think when you're practicing, when you're in the, in the practice room working on something, I think it's very important to really have an idea of like, okay, I'm, you know, this is where I'm at, this is what I'm going to work on to get from, from here to here. So yeah, absolutely working on triads is an awesome exercise. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, I don't know if this is uh, doable, but is there a way where you can play a progression without 2-5-1 and then play it a second time using a 2-5-1? Sure. So that I can hear with my ear. Yeah, yeah. What does a 2 5 one do? Yeah, so so a two five one is essentially um, it, it's it's creating. I mean, can you play it now? You can I play it now? Sure, sure. Like sure. Version without it, and then, and then with it. Okay, so I'll go back and I'll play the again the uh, the one four five blues progression, and then I'll follow it up with the uh, with the pop blues. So the, so those two. One. This is the one four five. A one two three. <laughs> Um, I think both are equally important. 
I think that what you're touching on is extremely important. Um, you know, that's, that's actually something to really get deep into. I think that what I'm doing today is, of course, just discussing how the music works, um, how, how to work on how to practice things, and, and some ideas to kind of stretch yourself out. But um, Steve brings up a very, very good point, which is that in order to get the elements, like, to really get the swing feel in there, um, and to, you know, really get deeper into the language of it all, um, you know, you, you, can't, you can't substitute that with what's going on in here, right in your head, right? You have to do it on point to, to this in the ear, okay? You know, jazz is very much a, a language. You know, you, you really gotta compare it to that. I mean, you, you could say the same thing about somebody who speaks a certain language. Maybe they didn't necessarily remember how they, how they learned it, right? But they, they have it, they were trained to do it, so now it's very much in their, in their ear. And so, I mean, obviously there, there needs to be some fundamentals of theory, but I think listening and, and doing that kind of thing on a very deep level is, is extremely important. You know, I, I spent a lot of time, a lot of time transcribing solos, um, learning licks that I heard, going through them in the different keys, um, you know, based on the recordings that I listened to, you know, I, and, and when I say transcribing, for those of you who don't know what that is, that's taking a, a solo that you hear and playing it off the record. Um, you know, and, and doing that with multiple, multiple solos. And everybody's different. Some people can do it with just doing a few solos here and there. You know, and some people can do mounds and mounds and mounds, but still not be able to quite get the thing. That was me. <laughs> took a lot of, took a lot of work. You know, for me to really kind of get that that swing feel and that that element in my playing, it did not come easy. I mean, I spent a lot of time not being able to do the thing. I mean, to, in my opinion, even to some degree at a professional level, I, mean, I was already playing, you know, gigs and and doing a lot of things. When I listen back to that playing that I was doing now, I, I'm just like, oh my god, I can't believe I was actually going out and trying to sell that to the world. But, you know, I sell on YouTube. Don't do that. <laughs> so, are, are there yeah. elements of the sax technique that you can say help you to get the swing feel that you do? Yeah, um, well, I mean, and of course I'm going to really bear bones, and of course, like I said, transcribing is really important. There's, there's elements like ghosting and, you know, like, like trying to, I, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with what that is, where you're trying to take the notes and make them look really soft, like, you know, that kind of thing where you're, you know, in classical music calling it dynamics, but of course it's going to be different when you're doing the jazz. You know, when I'm teaching my, my junior high kids and my high school kids, one of the things I tell them to do is tongue up beats, you know? So, you know, you're not, so for example, if you're if you're working on like the Lenny Lee House book and you're going... So now it's going to get a little more complex. So, Mark, this is especially for you. This is what we <laughs> this is what we call the, the bird blues, okay? The blues for Alice and, and, and all that stuff, okay? So now it's going to we're going to be getting into really getting into heavier kind of two five one stuff. It's it's the chord changes of a tune that was written by Charlie Parker, Mr. Bebop, right? So so you have uh, actually stuff like this. So. So Mark, these are the, the first bars of it, right? I always think of it as a G because I'm a Right, 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 yeah. So, so this progress, this is a question for you, okay? What, what are these changes? What's the uh, Well, Blues for Alice, but what's the other team that this comes from? This part down the yeah, so that goes to the core change confirmation. Okay, so anyway.
So it gets pretty. <laughs> it gets pretty uh, interesting here. Writing. Drop bar lines too, since it might get a little confusing. Okay, so these are the bars. Okay, so now it's now it's two five all day long, right? So now now it's just nothing but, and, and it's kind of interesting you were asking this at the beginning about the major chords, so on blues, the blues for Alice changes we actually do start with one, so it starts on a, on a major chord, so that, uh, major chord, yeah. And so now we're completely substituting stuff, right? Now we're putting in 2-5, B minor, 2-5, it, it's just, it's, it's just sending 2-5s. So I won't take too much time to really get into the nitty gritty of that, I'll probably just play it, okay? So this is, this is the, this is the bird blues. One, two, a one, two, three. <laughs> it does get more complex than that so I want to you know just I'm just going to play this now more in like a actual bebop style right using yes that was yes. Like one note you, can play that <laughs> <laughs> you would know more than me Steve I don't even know about that <laughs> yeah yeah the yeah yeah the, the buddy guy one note uh, yeah <laughs> yeah that's a good point I you, I'll I'll let you know <laughs> all right one Two, oh, one, two, three, Fully endorse transcribing off the record. Okay, so that's 
So that's a bird blues. Um, you know, the other, the other thing I wanted to talk about, because some of you might be asking, well, where do I, where do I start? Because we're, so, we're talking so much about, you know, 251 vocabulary, right? So some people, some people might wonder, well, well, where do I start with that? So obviously, since we, since we have been talking today, the, the simpler the better, okay? So, you know, I'll, I would say that, you know, doing stuff that's very diatonic, nothing, nothing too fancy, something like this. I guess just draw bar lines here and make this as legible as I, as I can. So, you know, stuff like this, really just playing very much diatonic stuff like so, okay, is, is very helpful. Just really basic kind of 2 five, one language, you know. Stuff like that. Or, or you know, it's something. For a, for a longer phrase. And so this is, this is pretty simple kind of stuff, okay? So, you know, the, the kind of stuff that we have here, okay, essentially we're going, okay, here's an A minor chord, and it's, one, two, three, four, and then going over to D7, we have the nine, seven, six, five, and then hitting the one chord, we just go to the, the five. So this is an example of something very simple, but, but it's good to do stuff like this because it really it gets you to play really inside the bar lines. It really gets you to kind of, you know, work on your voice and you work on your accuracy, you know? So, uh, you know, th this kind of stuff, I think, when you're beginning to learn your licks, some of these basic licks are, are very helpful. And of course, as, as for any instrument, you want to be able to take these, these licks throughout the keys, you know. mentioning before about a dominant chord and, and the tension that you can put over a dominant chord. So I spent a long time learning all these licks before I finally learned this, which just made it so much easier for me, which is basically that on a dominant chord, there are essentially four altered notes, okay, and, the, and they're in the upper extensions of a chord, okay. And it's fairly easy to remember. It's the flat nine, sharp nine, Sharp 11 and flat 13. Okay? So, for example, if you're on a D7 chord, flat 9, you have the, the E flat. Sharp 9, you have the F natural or E sharp, right? Sharp 11, you have the G sharp. And flat 13, you have the B flat. Okay, so those are, those are essentially the four notes and, that you would play over a, a dominant chord. Okay? The altered notes that you would play over a dominant chord. Okay, so those are the four. Actually, would you mind demonstrating each of those ones? With yeah, that, that, that's what I'm going to do. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So, yeah, I'm going to. I'm just going to put out a lick that's going to sort of present all that stuff. And I think it was the first one I learned for that too. <laughs> So much better doing this side by ear than I have writing it out. Oh. 
apologize for making it so small. I'll talk about it in a minute so it doesn't seem so. Okay. So th this is an altered lick. Okay. This will. This is a lick that I learned when I was in school that brings out all the altered dominant notes that we just discussed. <laughs> It starts out very simple. Okay, first of all, it's in G. Okay, it's a 2 5 in the key of, of G. A minor to D7. Okay, so it starts out just with A minor, so very simple, kind of diatonic sort of lick. Okay, we go to the 1, then the B is the 2, C is the 3, D is the 4, okay, E is the 5. I know it's really hard, but just making sure I wrote up the ledger lines right. G is the 7, 6, and 5. So very, very simple, kind of diatonic stuff. That's your basic two chord. Now, getting over to the fun stuff, okay? Over on the, uh, on the D7. So, we have here our E flat. So, all right, I'm going to pick on you. Okay, that's all right with you. Yeah. For for the E flat, okay, what altered extension is that? Very good, Mark. Thank you. All right, Mark, what's next? What's our F natural? F natural is a raised nine. Also known as that. Good. Sharp nine. Okay, then we have our F sharp, which is, of course, our the third. third. Very good. And then we have our G sharp. Very good. Okay, so Marks, Marks knows all this stuff. So very good. So this is a sharp 11. And finally, the last one, Mark. Very good. A plus for Mark. Okay. All right. So that particular lick brings out all four altered extensions. Okay? It brings out the flat 9, brings out the sharp 9, sharp 11, and flat 13. And then just kind of moves down nicely diatonic. But, you know, oh, and then brings out the uh, sharp nine again. Okay. Oh, yeah. So that's our lick. Okay, that is an altered lick that you can start to, to practice. And, and stuff, obviously, stuff like that to get into your playing. Okay. Can you think of that as altered dominant scale? You can do that. There, there's, there's the whole go up a step in melodic minor. You can do it that way. I mean, you've probably heard that. You can do it that way. Too. Yeah, so there, there's that. You can do that. But, but the problem with, in my opinion, with like working on scales and all that kind of stuff is it didn't teach me the language of it all. Right. So when I got too into that scale approach, like what scale to play over what, I think that stuff actually helped me more later. I think it actually helped me after I learned how to play the stuff. Then I can sort of figure out, okay, like, like that's why I said earlier, I don't really want to talk about diminished harmony. Because if you start getting too deep into that, then it becomes a, like an old thing. Right? Like, okay, what am I, you know, you got to have all the basic language things down. Then you can start to say, all right, now if I put this over this, and this scale over that scale, yeah. and then, you, then, you, then it starts to go, then you start to. Would you rather just think about the scale with these alterations? That can yeah, I like to really break it down and use licks and then, and then analyze every note and how they relate to the chords. I think that's my, in my opinion, much more. Uh, Practical approach than you know up a half so a step a lot of times in my opinion. But you can do that too. Okay. And so it's also just a chromatic run in that second. In a sense, yeah. I mean, obviously, this lick is, is pretty easy. Uh -huh. So, you know, you're going to do that. Once you get into more fancy stuff, you're not going to necessarily do it in a chromatic run. You're going to do it in bigger leaves. Right. And then, of course, there's a the discussion of voice leading and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, could, that's... Could, could, you play, could you play that with greater leaps than doing the, using the same using, tools? Okay. Okay. One, two, three. leading to a chord tone and still bring out the altered dominance and still bring out all those particular things to, to, to fit, okay? One, one other thing I wanted to talk about um, was I wanted to talk a little bit about 
this. So I'm going to do actually one more lick, which will bring up one more harmonic device that I like to use a, a lot, pretty much as much as I can. Mark, are you familiar with the word enclosure? Um, a little bit. Okay. There was a YouTube video I haven't watched yet talking about it. Yeah, probably Chad left with Brown. So I'll try to make some sense of it. And obviously, probably could do it a lot better than me. Did Jake, did Jake would call your negative ring. No, I'm not. No, I'm kidding. I'm no. kidding. That's a joke. That's a joke. Sorry. Yeah. Let's see. Just me. I'm totally making this out. discussing and what I'm going over today is really more about what kind of sounds you want to create rather than what works and what doesn't work and what you should play and what you shouldn't play. You know, it's kind of like that, that, you know, that saying, learn the rules and then break them. I think Bird said it, maybe train, you know, 
and, and it's very much true. I mean, you, you learn all this stuff so you can understand the music, so you can bring out the, the essence of the music, and then it's, you have every right in the world, once you do that, to completely knock it down. And of course, to eventually come up with your own sound. You know, we don't, we don't necessarily want to have 10,000 million, billion, you know, Charlie Parker clones running around the world, right? Or John Cultural clones. That's not really the, the idea of doing this. Like, you know, looking to those people as gods and saying, we must do what they do, right? It, it's, it's essentially to learn the ropes. It's to learn how to do this stuff, and then eventually you can kind of come up with your own thing. You take a little bit of this player, learn from that, and you move on. You get a little bit of a player from somebody else, and another piece of theory, and blah, 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 blah. Stack it on top of each other. And then eventually it just helps you become a better you, right? It helps you become like a more knowledgeable and, and you. And then you can make the the artistic creative decision of, of what you what you want to do. Whether or not you want to be like an inside player, you want to you really stay in the 40s and 50s and really do that, or do you want to further it along? You know, do you want to learn this kind of theory in order to be able to write, you know, to write your own own tunes? Or maybe not use this when you write so you can create stuff that doesn't sound like that, you know, totally up to you. But that's that's essentially, I think, why it's there and why it's essentially important to to study this stuff, you know. So yeah, yeah, great. Thanks, Jason Thank you. Well, that was very informative. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And uh, you know, towards that end, uh, not next month, but the month after that, uh, we're going to have Mike and Man come in, and he's going to talk about uh, uh, modalism and using the modes in your soul. So another approach, also to playing, that should be fascinating. Uh, next month, uh, we're going to have Alice Clemens come in and talk about soul fetish and how you can use soul fetish in uh, right? Yeah. And uh, anyway, and then uh, in May, uh, yeah, right. Scotty Wright's going to come to the lecture. And um, anyway, uh, like I said, we depend entirely on donations, so these lectures are free and the jam is free. So uh, if, if you can do that, please add to our tip jar. It really helps us out and helps us do more events. Uh, and I want to thank the Jazz Society for hosting us and uh, for uh, John and the Beast Cook Brewery. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks, so, uh, let's now put everything you learn to use. Let's jam. Good, 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 kid. Yeah. That's good. Yeah.